So, 3D icons, another rather trendy design style at the moment. So guess what we're going to be making today? We're actually going to produce this 3D education icon. In fact, I'm hoping this is going to be a little bit of a series of shorter videos to help you to quickly create your own 3D icon set. So with that out of the way, my name is Keelan and it's very nice to meet you. So if you're ready to jump into Blender, let's go. Okay, so here we are, and today we're actually going to make use of the 3D cube. The 3D cube is going to become a beautiful, magical book. Well, maybe not so magical, but uh, it's going to be a book either way. So let's just get our cube, and I'm going to scale this down with S and Z there. And then we're going to create those little segments where we see the pages. And initially, I want to quickly apply a rotation scale, so click and control A. Apply rotation and scale. This is just this just makes sure that when we do inset the faces here, so I'm gonna select these three faces, make sure you hold shift, and then we're gonna press I to inset. This is gonna give us a nice even inset. Around there will do me. And then with the faces still selected, I'm gonna press Alt to E, and then this gives us access to extrude faces along normals. Then you can bring this up and down, but of course we want it to come down inwards just a little bit just to create that definition of a book all right cool and then i'm going to go ahead and maybe bevel the back edges here so in edit mode press 2 to select edges and then click on these two and then do Control b scroll your mouse wheel up to increase the amount of cuts and perhaps around there just to give us a slight bevel on the edges and then we can shade smooth this so click right click shade smooth and of course we lose all the definition. So in order to correct that, we come down to object properties, into normals, auto smooth. And you'll be using this a lot during your time in Blender. Okay, and then I want two books. So let's just do shift D. We're gonna do the quick way. Hold Z, uh, tap Z to lock to the Z axis, bring this up. And there's a pile of books. I'm gonna rotate this one on the Z axis slightly using R and Z there, and now we've got this cool looking little stack of books. And now the next thing I want to do is to create this graduation hat on top. So I'm just going to do shift A, add in a cylinder, shrink this down, bring it up, scale it down with S, and perhaps around here. If I want it a little bit taller, I don't know, you do you, it's completely up to you what you want. And then I'm going to go ahead and shade smooth this too, just like with the last one, into our object properties, normal to auto smooth. Beautiful. Okay. And then initially I want to create two extra rings around the outside, just to add a little bit of style. So I'm going to click on our cylinder first. Then I'm going to do shift S, cursor to selected. This, this just moves the 3D cursor to this point here, so that whenever we add in a new shape, it's going to be right here in the center. And I'm going to add in two rings, so I'm going to go to Mesh and Torus here, and then you can adjust your properties in the little Add Torus menu here, so we can adjust how wide it's going to be, the sort of general radius, and I'm going to shrink it down to maybe 0.5 here, We don't, I don't want anything too big, and perhaps 0.55. Radius, and then I can go ahead and bring this down because it's going to be around about the base of the hat. Maybe come into a side view to get a better view here. GZ, bring this up. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to go ahead and right click Shade Smooth. You can apply a subdivision surface modifier because I can see this is showing some of the edges. So if we just come into Modifiers, add a subdivision surface, that's really going to smooth this over. Cool. And then I'm going to do Shift D to duplicate this, Z to lock it to the Z axis, and just bring it up to around here. That's looking cool. And now I want to go ahead and add the square top. So tab into edit mode on our cylinder here, 3 to select faces, select the top face, Shift S, cursor to selected. Now we're working up here. Back into object mode, Shift A, I'm just going to start with a plane. Now that looks quite large, so let's use S to scale this down, maybe around there, and time into edit mode, select this top face, 
and then easy to extrude this up. Really good to me. And then I'm going to apply a rotation and scale once again. And then perhaps we can go ahead and add a bevel modifier. So I'm going to come into my modifiers here and add the bevel. I'm going to increase my segments to around six. There goes my mobile phone again. <laughs> and perhaps we'll do an offset of around 0 0.015. Yeah, because I, I, I want to keep the general square shape, but I want it nice and smooth. And yeah, my, I've already turned this on, so come down to your normals, auto smooth, if you need to adjust your shading there. And then I'm going to do shift A once again, add in a new cylinder, scale this right down, scale it on the Z axis, bring it up slightly, and then you can do S to scale, shift Z to scale it on all axes except the Z axis, just to make this a little thinner. Okay, cool. Right click shade smooth and turn on auto smoothing. I'm just going to bevel this top edge, but of course, because we've scaled it, we need to apply a rotation and scale. So control A, rotation and scale, tab into edit mode, two for edges, hold alt, click this edge, select the entire loop, and then just press control B and create a bit of a bevel. I'm going to increase my loop cuts by scrolling my mouse wheel up. Let's get something nicely rounded like that. Cool. This is looking quite nice. Perhaps increase the scale of my square a little bit here. Okay, and I like the general style we've got going on here. Now I just want to quickly add in this little rope that tends to hang off the side. Go into front view, just so I know which way is the front, and I want to hang it off the side. So firstly, I'm going to go ahead and do Shift S and cursor to select on our top bit here. Go into front view. And then I'm going to add in a vertex. So shift A, mesh, single vert, add single vert. If you don't have the single vert tool, edit, preferences, and then in your add-ons, search for extra, whoops, and just make sure you enable extra objects and extra curves and all that good stuff. Okay, and then when you have the vertex selected, go ahead and into your modifiers. I always tend to add a skin and a subdivision surface modifier. Press Alt-Z, go into X-ray mode, and we're going to scale this down. Uh, in order to scale down a skin modifier, you need to go ahead and do Control a to scale this down. Then I'm just going to use E-X to extrude this out, and then Easy to extrude this down, just as if it was a bit, you know, hanging over the edge. You can go ahead select both of these vertexes, use GX to move them in a bit, perhaps select it all, GZ to move it down, so it's more in line on top. And I'm also going to go ahead, select this one vertex, do Control Shift B to bevel vertex. I'm going to scroll down to reduce the amount of cuts we're putting in here, or the extra vertexes. Around there, looks kind of cool. Okay, I think it's a bit long, so I'm also going to go ahead and just do GZ on this here to bring this up. And I need to mark the root, so highlight the base vertex, come over to here and just do mark root. Okay, cool. And now let's go ahead and bring this up a little bit more. And then with this vertex selected, Shift S, cursor to selected. Okay, and then back into object mode, you could turn off X-ray. I'm going to do Shift A, add in a UV sphere, scale this down, and this is like it's like a little bit of a rope tie sort of thing, sort of thing, or maybe even a bead. I click shades. I'm going to go ahead and add in another vertex. So in object mode, Shift A, single vert, add single vert, add in a skin and subdivision surface modifier. Control A to scale this down into X-ray mode and front view mode so I can see what I'm doing. Easy, scale this down, control A, just to scale. And you're looking for almost like a teardrop effect. I'm just gonna mark this one as the root. And so scale this up slightly, GZ. And if I have a little look, that's looking pretty cool. We can go ahead and increase the viewport render. Twice. Same for the other skin. Maybe scale this down slightly. 
that's looking pretty cool. Now, in order to shade smooth this, we need to apply the skin on both of these to right click shade smooth, right click shade smooth. That looks pretty good to me. Now let's move on to quickly color and add some lighting and render this thing out. And before we do go ahead and start adding color, I just want to go into our objects here and just apply our modifiers. Just so it's all nice and good to go. Okay, and then let's click and hold shift, click on all these, and then go ahead and do control J to join up all the parts of the hat. You can see where we're going to have to turn on the normals again, so auto smooth, just to keep that definition. And I'm also going to join up the rope here. So I'm going to hold shift, click on all three of these, control J, and now they're all nicely one pieces. Okay, great stuff. So now let's jump into our materials preview here and let's add some color. This is where it gets fun. So click on the hat into our materials properties here, new, and the hat is just going to be called hat. And let's make this slightly into the blues and bring it down to get like a nice deep color. That's looking quite nice. And I'd like it to be a little bit reflective to get like a nice sort of look. So maybe 0.4 on the roughness just to catch more of that light. And then in terms of the books, let's make the book, uh, book one, let's call it. I'm just going to make it like a pinky color. The other ones, because we duplicated, the other one's also going to get some of the materials, but we'll change that afterwards. I'm just going to make this perhaps a, yeah, that's nice, like a reddish pinky color there. That looks kind of cool. Tab into edit mode, three to select faces, select the three areas where it's going to be pages. Press the plus icon here, and I'm just going to call this pages. Click assign, and now you can see that this has got the properties of this color here. And you can adjust this, I suppose. There's not a lot to do here. Maybe the pages can have a bit of roughness because they don't really reflect quite as much. And the book itself, I'm also going to increase the roughness to around 0.6. Or maybe around 0.75. Because I don't, I don't want them to reflect too much. I want that nice matte look. And then onto the second book. We're just going to have to go ahead and click minus here to get rid of that. New. I'm going to call this book 2. And maybe give this a nice purpley color. Give it roughness of the same, 0.75. And into edit mode, select those three faces again and click the plus, go into our drop down and click pages and assign. And that's looking good. Now quickly adjust the rope. I'm just going to call it rope, make it like a nice yellow. Yellow. Maybe you can lean into the oranges slightly if you want. Um, completely up to you. That looks good. Rope, of course, is quite rough. It's not going to be reflective, so maybe 0.85. That looks good. And the bead is going to be a separate color, so what we're going to have to do is tab into edit mode. And if you hover over the bead here, press L. That's going to select nothing but the bead. Plus, new. I'm just going to call this bead. Assign. And I'm going to make this perhaps a pink. Cool and make it 0.2. No, that's far too reflective. 0.4. Okay, that's looking really nice. So let's go ahead and add in our lighting and render this thing out. Okay, so in terms of lighting, we're going to have to go ahead and jump into a rendered preview so we can see the light in action. So in terms of lighting, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know, I just simply go ahead and get a nice basic three point lighting setup good to go and then just render this out. So we're just going to take our default light here. I'm going to move it towards the front where the camera it is, just so we can go ahead and brighten up the front nicely and then duplicate this out two times. So one to the side and one to the back. And so the idea is that this is the main brightness on the front. This one off to the side is going to brighten those shadows just a little bit. And this one on the back, as you can see here, is going to add a nice bright silhouette of light and a nice shine to our icon here. So let's also jump into our render properties. And in terms of the general settings I like to go with, I tend to go for a high contrast look, mix the colors nice and uh, nice and vibrant there, pa pa pa. And 
also gonna jump in to our light properties actually so let's make this nice and bright on the front so give this a power of around 1500 then the one off to the side it's gonna be a little bit dimmer so maybe around 800 just to brighten up those shadows and the one around the back tends to be quite bright so maybe around 2000 power there and then in terms of shadows these are quite harsh so what we can do is in our light properties increase the radius this is just going to soften up the shadow slightly same with the side increase the radius and you can see the shadows get nice and soft and then behind maybe what this is going to do is it's going to soften the shadows as well as it will increase the general radius whoa me undo that it's going to increase how far that sort of shine comes across the top and now let's click our camera icon here to see what we're working with press n and then go into view lock camera to view here this is going to let us move our camera around but i'm also going to want to come in to my output properties change my resolution to 1080 by 1080 this is going to give me a nice square frame to work with but of course depending on your use case you may want something different you may want something really high resolution but i'm probably going to be just using this as a square icon and 1080 by 10 is also a nice one for your instagram if you want a little cheeky instagram post and then i think that is looking good to me so i'm going to press n to close that menu and then where the magic happens is we're going to go back into our render properties and i'm going to jump into cycles and this is going to do some dynamic lighting and rendering where we get these beautiful finishes and i'm also going to jump into our backlight there i'm going to go into the light properties and give it a bit of a blue tone depending on what you're going for with your design the backlight can really add some nice finishing touches to your lighting and then let's quickly go back into our scene here go to film make sure we enable transparent here so that when we render this out there's no background and then we can also come in to our layer properties here turn on denoising data come right down to the bottom here and turn on the denoising tab i know we've used the compositing nodes in the past but a subscriber did mention to me why i don't use this method and it was because i'm just used to the older way but a more straightforward way is to let go into view layer properties and turn on denoising and your denoising data this is just going to make sure that there's no grain when you do the final render so go ahead and press f12 and bask in your beautiful new icon and there we have it our finished 3d icon and that's going to do it for today's tutorial i hope you've enjoyed i hope this has been another insightful one for you go ahead and leave a like and subscribe for more of this type of content in the future and let me know down below what videos you'd like to see but on that note this has been keelan i hope you have a nice day as always and i'll catch you in the next one